We have a brand new segment that we're unveiling right now. Lucy, Woo! we have a top five list, but what are we what are we calling this again? The top five reasons to watch college football this season. Not that you need any. You don't you definitely don't, you don't need, any. need any, but we think that the show is a little light on college football at times, other than the Miami Hurricanes, which we know are the best team in the world. It wasn't Mario's guys last year. It was no. Manny's guys. This year it's Mario's guys. They're going to be much better. And other than that, we don't talk about it too much on the main show. So we're going to be doing a little college football segment here and there. Um, so we combined brain power this week to do a little preview uh, top five list. But uh, we have a couple OLIs, I think. Yeah, we have one. But honestly, there's like a thousand. That there I are a thousand. Right so now. maybe we'll just do our top five and then we'll just keep rambling after. Yeah, that. I really like that idea. I like that idea, too. So, Lucy, you went to Iowa, obviously. We know that. I went to Notre Dame. Taylor went to North Carolina. He's the other big college football fan in the room. Uh, so this is going to be a very um, non-biased assessment of college football, minus those three teams. We are very biased about those three I teams. I have never been biased a day in my life, ever. Yeah, same, anything. actually. I also claim Clemson. Sure, you can have it. All right, should you, do you want to give us the OLI? Okay, our OLI is... We're just going to see what happens with Northwestern. Mm. We're just going to see what goes on <laughs> with Northwestern. Yeah! We figured it out. Like we said, this Atta is boy, new. Taylor. We're, we're starting this for the first time. So we're keeping an eye on Northwestern because, A, they haven't won a game in the United States in a couple of years. Yeah. B, Which is impressive. Their coach just got fired. And everyone's wearing T-shirts that completely go right past the point of why he was fired. Yeah, so what are we looking out for? Are we looking out to see if they win a game? Or are we just kind of following along for the messy drama? I think a little bit of both. I okay. think we have the Big Ten West messy drama because you have P.J. Fleck. Now you have former Pat Fitzgerald mm -hmm. at Northwestern. Who knows what's happening with Iowa and Kirk Ferentz. I think Northwestern and Colorado are on my do they win a game watch. Okay, so Northwestern on do they win a game watch. Uh, allegations at Northwestern this summer, very serious. And things just don't seem to be going very well. So the last year's Week Zero sweethearts, when they beat Nebraska in Ireland, now on the OLI list for keep an eye on Northwestern. Are you things nervous? Are weird there about Notre Dame. What if they yes. win and then they what catch they lose? whatever Northwestern got? Um, okay, I I don't think that will happen because last year Northwestern, yeah, they won in Ireland, then they lost their remaining 11 games of the season. It happens. I, I don't think that will happen. However, I do hate playing Navy. I think it's something that sets me apart from a lot of other Notre Dame fans. It's a rivalry that I would be okay with not uh, playing anymore. Um, it's not because I don't respect the troops, okay? It's just a lose-lose <laughs> proposition for Notre Dame. If you beat Navy, cool, it's Navy. If you lose to Navy, your season is over and you are toast. So not super looking forward to that, but excited for the game in Dublin, which I will be attending. Yeah. All right, number five. Number five. We have another season of Bo Nix. Ooh! <laughs> I am a Bo Nix stan. I don't know what it is about Bo Nix, but I just root for him and everything he does. I think it's because Auburn fans were so terrible to him, and I don't think he deserved yeah. any of that. He's They've got a, a tough go of it. Yeah, he's got a billboard in New York. This is like Oregon's last year, second to last year in the Pac-12. This is a special year for Bo Nix, okay? It's his eighth year in college. <laughs> I'm just excited to see him shine. There's a lot of old quarterbacks playing this year. There's a lot of guys that you're going to be like Phil Dracovic playing for Pitt this year. It's like his fourth team in college football. <laughs> Sam Hartman. This is his sixth year in college football. Bo Nix. I don't even know how old he is. 29. JT Daniels is on his seventh school, I'm pretty sure. Where, where is Keaton Slovis? He's on his third. Or fourth. He's at um, BYU incredible stuff Wild. keep an eye on all the old quarterbacks and especially Bo Nix yeah number four Texas back <laughs> exclamation point yeah uh, uh, question mark are we on Arch Manning watch this season? We are absolutely. I saw like four tweets about him this morning. <laughs> that were like that were like people are saying he's looking real good in practice oh boy Quinn Ewers is worried Quinn Ewers is scared opposing big 12 coaches saying well, he'll start again absolutely all I'm right. Not, I don't on, actually think that happens. We're on Texas back watch. But I do sort of kind of believe that Texas is back because if you look at last season, Texas, if Quinn Ewers had not gotten hurt against Bama, would have won that game. Absolutely. They would have won that game, and then I don't know what we would have seen from Texas like going on, but they were almost back. So this year they're all the way back, or we're not sure yet? 
I think I am afraid to say this on camera, documented, but I, I'm going to just say Texas is back. I think, okay. It feels gross, but I'm that just going to say That it. does feel disgusting. I think we should make a Texas back meter. We should monitor Ooh. it throughout the season and determine whether or not Texas back. And there's that's in itself a reason to watch college football this season. Absolutely. Keep an eye on the Texas back monitor. Lucy, what do we have for number three? All right. The number three reason that you should watch college football this season. We have something we've never seen before a point tracker for the Iowa Hawkeyes, where it is written into our offensive coordinator's contract that for him to keep his job, Iowa has to score 25 points per game. So you will see every week the 25-point-per-game tracker to see if Brian Ferentz keeps his nepotism job, which, by the way, doesn't specify the offense has to score 25 points. The defense can do it, and he could keep his job. Very bold to put... Iowa's offense as a reason why we should watch college football this season and not really a reason why we shouldn't but the, I like the girls who get it get it the girls who don't don't <laughs> I like where your head is at and I will be watching the Iowa points meter as well as the Texas back meter because there's there's a man's job on the line that what are you hoping deserve. for as an Iowa fan? Do you want him to fail spectacularly and lose his job, or do you want them to actually be good? Um, Iowa has a really bad schedule, um, as in the sense of it's so easy and they're going to score points. <laughs> um, Who, would, okay. My dream case scenario is Iowa scores 24 points per game the entire season and wins all those games. Okay. I would like to win the games without scoring the points. That's kind of also brutal, if I'm being honest. I Maybe we should have put that in the OLI, Lucy. It's going to be awesome. I'm not, I'm not exactly convinced that that's a reason, but number two on They're our gonna list. They're going to have to try to score points. You don't think that's going to be fun to watch them try to do that? They've never done that before. <laughs> that's Touché. A, it's a first time for everything. Touche. Uh, number two on our list, a reason for all of our listeners who hate listen to our college football segments uh, to watch college football this season, to see which – Non-Power 5, out-of-conference team, Miami, the Hurricanes lose to this season. We got good options. We have Miami of Ohio, which mm -hmm. how great would that be? Miami losing, losing to Miami. Losing to Miami and of Ohio. Bethune-Cookman, I believe. Mm-hmm. And Temple. Yeah. We can, um, why don't we just count Boston College on the list? <laughs> <laughs> well, they did lose to Duke last year. Yeah, you know what? Duke's back, by the way. What? You're right. Duke is back. Mike Elko, hell of a coach. Brian hell Leonard, of a ball coach. quarterback. Good quarterback. Duke is back. Texas, we're, we're not sure. It's on the meter. Miami lost to Duke last year. That We kind of didn't count it because Duke was back. But this year, I think let's add all ACC opponents into the mix. Yeah. Let's just watch the college football this season to see which team Miami loses to. That isn't a team that you would you know, be like, okay, well, of course they lost to Clemson or FSU, whatever. Oh, I love Miami. I want not in like an endearing way, and just so like, <laughs> do you love Miami? Not the city. Um, <laughs> you know, our number two. <laughs> that was number two. Number one, oh, just Lucy. My podcast co-host Michael Lick Senior uh, posited this to me last week on the show, which was that this one day, what we have as number one will be the ultimate bar trivia question, Ooh. which is who was the last team to win the Pac-12 championship. So our number one reason why you should watch college football this season is to see who the last team is to ever win the Pac-12 championship. Not USC. Um, I hope. I mean, I hope not. Utah won it the last two years in a row. Yeah. There's a lot of very good quarterbacks Cam in the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is, like, surprisingly stacked this year. Like, it's probably the best conference, if we're being honest with ourselves. Like, the most competitive. It absolutely has the best quarterbacks per capita, if they all live up to the hype. I mean, Cam Rising, we've seen play before. Michael Penix, we've seen play before. We know that they're both good. Bo Nix has his ups and downs, but he's a fun mm -hmm. guy to watch. DJ Uyunglele, flamed out at Clemson, but he's at Oregon State now. They could be pretty good. My eyes are on the Beavs. Who else do we have in the Pac-12? Caleb Williams. Yeah. I mean, the, of course, but USC choked in the Pac-12 championship last year, so I'm not going to. That's another fun thing to look out for. Did they learn how to tackle? Mm. Is that something Ooh. that they've learned in the offseason? Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator for USC, he's back. He's like the Brian Ferens yeah. of the Pac-12. It's wild. He Guy, doesn't because we're yeah. so nepotism. He doesn't get the attention because mm. he's just a bad hire. <laughs> we're we're family ties. <laughs> yeah, the Pac-12 is going to be awesome. This is actually like the last year for a lot of things. Texas, yeah. Oklahoma, last year in the Big Twelve. This is the final year of the four-team playoff. It's like a kind of a last dance sort of college football season. It's going to look a lot different next year for sure. Do we do we want to make college football playoff
predictions. Ooh, okay. Putting you on the spot. So I'll give you my methodology for choosing the college football playoff. I picked the four teams that made it the year before. That's because good. Because every year someone like Dez Howard or Cole Kublik or someone on ESPN makes a college football playoff top four that has like NC State or Baylor or Pitt or a team that I'm just like, ah, I don't, Jim, I don't know about that. So I always just go Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, or That's whoever good. was in it, TCU, Ohio State, whatever. All right, I got... The four that were in it the year before. Okay, so I'm not going to go the four that were in it before because I don't think TCU... Well, yeah, TCU, I'll take them out because they got their asses kicked in the national championship. It happens. And they lost their offensive coordinator. Yeah, and everybody else. Yeah, and everyone else. All right, so I've got... Let's go Georgia. You know, even though Kirby tells all their guys they're doubted. No. (laughs) Clip this clip. Uh, Right, Georgia, Michigan. Who else... Clemson. Clemson. Okay. I, I have a sneaking suspicion Clemson is back. So you have Clemson new winning the ACC, I assume. New quarterback. Yeah. Cade Klubnick will yeah. be starting at quarterback. No DJ. They no. have a new coordinator. They have a great run game. Like, Clemson's always had the Will talent. Shipley. They've just had, yeah. like, no real kind of direction with it. Like, a few years ago, Clemson's numbers, we played this fun game at my old job where we would hide all the, like, like logos and stuff and put up Clemson's numbers and Iowa's numbers and you had to pick out which one was which and it was a lot tougher than you think I got it wrong at one point really yeah they mm. were really really bad offensively not a good offense but they they fired Brandon Streeter yeah. their offensive coordinator brought in Garrett Riley from TCU and they're going to have a much more uh, explosive offense I think people are assuming yeah I and it's like you're not okay you're in the ACC so you have Clemson winning the ACC and I making have, the yeah. playoff uh the Florida State hype I can't get behind quite yet Ooh, uh, overrated I think a little Florida overrated. State overrated we'll find out week one my god yeah they have they have within their first month I think they have Clemson and LSU so yeah. we'll find out real fast if Florida State's what we think they're, you know, supposed to be. All right, so be. Georgia, Clemson. Okay, so Georgia, Clemson, Michigan. Because they have the easiest schedule ever, right? Yeah. And, oof. Who else? I I don't think – I think Michigan's a lot better than Ohio State. Do we have year. any Pac-12 teams in the That's playoff That's what I was thinking Lucy. because USC was so close, but that defense is still bad. It's mm-hmm. not getting any better. And the Pac-12's tough this year. I think they could lose a game or two. I think everyone in the Pac-12. So no Pac-12 teams you know in the what? playoff. Actually, I'm going to go a Pac-12 team in the playoff. But I'm going to go wild card because you have to one fun yes, wild Yes, she's doing it, folks. Not Oregon State. Let's not go that far. But give me Oregon. Colorado? Oh. <laughs> Colorado, yeah. <laughs> Dion's back. Their schedule is really hard. Yeah. Not and they don't have any players. I mean, they do. But some, we're not sure. Yeah. Interesting. Lucy, this has been fun. We'll be back next week with more. You guys are going to love it.